Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 16th of November. Cyclone Gaja ravages India's southern Tamil Nadu province. Activists protest against enforced disappearances in Balochistan. And Rohingya in Bangladesh protest efforts to send them back to Myanmar. And now for all the details. Cyclonic storm Gaja claimed at least 11 lives and left damages in a town of India's southern coastal Tamil Nadu after it made landfall on Friday morning. Strong winds and heavy rain left a trail of destruction with fallen trees, damaged buildings and vehicles. Cyclonic storm Gaja made landfall in the wee hours of Friday morning in a town in India's southern coastal province of Tamil Nadu. The weather department in a midnight address had earlier said that the cyclone was expected to cross between the Vedaranyam and Nagapattinam regions with winds moving around 60 to 74 miles per hour. Damaging winds and flooding rain left a trail of destruction behind with fallen trees and damaged buildings and vehicles. Four teams of the National Disaster Response Force were already put into action in the Nagapattinam region, which faced the eye of the cyclone to clear out the highways and other vital roads. This all, the trees all fell down and the road all black. It's now very critical. This, this is, the, I saw the first time this cyclone is very dangerous. As per reports, authorities had already evacuated around 76,290 people from the low-lying areas. A special emergency helpline numbers had also been announced as the cyclone was expected to move inward in the western direction and to get weakened gradually in the next six hours. Moving on, a massive protest was held by family members of Baloch missing persons and activists on Thursday in Balochistan's Quetta city, demanding justice for those who have been forcefully abducted by Pakistani forces in the province. The protesters highlighted that Pakistan has been using enforced disappearances and extrajudicial killings to muzzle dissenting voices in Balochistan. Family members of Baloch missing persons and other activists carried out a massive protest on Thursday outside the press club in Quetta city to seek justice for those who have been forcefully abducted by intelligence agencies in the province. The protesters highlighted that Pakistan has been using enforced disappearances, extrajudicial killings to muzzle dissenting voices in Balochistan. They blame Pakistani media for not highlighting the issue despite the fact that hundreds of people have gone missing in the past few years. They demanded that the missing persons should be produced before the courts if they have committed any crimes. When will the international community begin to pay attention to the missing Baloch? Is it not enough for United Nations to pay their attention when these missing bodies are found with bullets? Holes been drilled into the bones and joints? If they are guilty, they deserve due process like humans in the courts. Activists have long blamed that hundreds of Baloch political activists and intellectuals have disappeared and many brutally killed by Pakistani security forces over the past several years. They have been protesting worldwide to seek help from the international community and human rights organizations. In news from Afghanistan, U.S. Special Envoy for Peace in Afghanistan, Zalme Khalizad, on Thursday met Taliban officials in Qatar to discuss the issue of ending the war in Afghanistan. The meeting concluded with a set of recommendations that will contribute to realizing inclusive national reconciliation in the trouble-torn country. 
U.S. Special Envoy for Peace in Afghanistan, Zalme Khalilzad, on Thursday met Taliban officials in Doha, the capital city of Qatar, to discuss the issue of ending the war in Afghanistan. This comes after representatives from the UAE, Saudi Arabia, United States and Afghanistan met in Abu Dhabi on Tuesday as part of international endeavors to push forward the peace process in Afghanistan. The meeting ended with a set of recommendations that will contribute to realizing inclusive national reconciliation in Afghanistan. خاطر آغاز مذاکرات صلح از تمام کشورها خواستیم که به شمول ایالات متحده آمریکا که کار خود قوی تر بسازند همکاری هایشون رو به حد بسازند و ما با تدبیر و با مدیریت آرام در پروسه صلح افغانستان پیش بریم چون حالت خیلی حساس است ملت طالب حکومت د دغه ټولو په مشوره دا خبره وسی چې آیا موقت اداره جوړی د پار د حل د مشکلات او د پار چې حل په مشکل دا مشکلات په حل سی او که انتخابات بیا کی هغه دی بیا د دوی په ټولو مشوره باندې خبره وسی An Afghan-born former U.S. ambassador to Kabul and Iraq, Khalil Zad, was appointed in September to the U.S. State Department team that is leading the reconciliation effort and peace talks with the Taliban. Khalil Zad is expected to arrive back in Afghan capital, Kabul, on Saturday. More on news from Afghanistan. Major assaults by Taliban in Afghanistan's western Farha province have killed at least 30 Afghan security forces, officials said on Thursday. The Taliban claimed responsibility for the clashes in Farha, which are being widely seen as forming part of their strategy to step up battlefield pressure while seeking a political settlement with the United States. Major assaults by Taliban insurgents in Afghanistan's western Farah province, mounted with the aim of weakening the government's grip on the region, have killed at least 30 Afghan security forces, officials said on Thursday. The Taliban have recently ramped up attacks in the strategic provinces in their battle to expel foreign forces, topple the western-backed government and restore their version of hardline Islamic law. Meanwhile, Afghan security forces in Farah said more than 40 Taliban fighters have been killed in the province so far. Residents, however, painted a grim picture of the situation, saying the Taliban were still present in some other parts of the Farah city. Fighting in Farah highlights the pressure of Afghanistan's overstretched security forces, which are suffering from their highest level of casualties ever. Moving on to news from Bangladesh. Hundreds of Rohingya refugees in Bangladesh on Thursday protested against any attempt to send them back to Myanmar after the launch of a repatriation plan was postponed. Bangladesh and Myanmar had agreed on October 30 to begin the return of Rohingyas to Myanmar in mid-November. Hundreds of Rohingya Muslim refugees in Bangladesh protested against any attempt to send them back to Myanmar after the launch of a repatriation plan was postponed on Thursday. Myanmar officials said that Bangladesh had begun preparations to repatriate an initial batch of 2,200 Rohingya to Myanmar on Thursday in line with a plan agreed with Myanmar in October, but no refugees had been moved back across the border. There have been extensive doubts about the plan and it has been opposed by the UN Refugee Agency and aid groups who fear for the safety of the Rohingya in Myanmar and by many Rohingya in the camps in Bangladesh. Already, the government has been completed. 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 एमबीसी जनरल नेशनल ब्रिफिशिंग काटा से यहाँ तो दिस सरकारे बर्मा सरकारे दिस बात गुल्ले आरा अहम जायुम आरा मंचे आरा कंप्लेन कर दे दूसरी अलंबर उल्ले आरा कैंपन नोटा क्यों आरा जायरे सौरा शुरी जाजार जागाशिल तेर हेड जायरे आरा तो दिस निजी निजी जायगी फारी तो क्यों आरा अहम जायुम भ more than 700,000 Rohingya fled the sweeping army crackdown in Myanmar's Rakhine province last year, launched in response to Rohingya insurgent attacks on the security forces. UN mandated investigators have accused the Myanmar army of genocidal intent and ethnic cleansing. Myanmar denies the accusations. 
A famous toy train running for almost 140 years from India's eastern New Jalpaiguri to the scenic hill station of Darjeeling has been attracting tourists from across the globe. The route is the most popular one because of its quaint course through tea plantations, long rocky stretches, hilly forests and deep moths. A famous toy train tracing the Himalayas from eastern New Jalpaiguri to the scenic hill station of Darjeeling in India's West Bengal province has been attracting tourists from across the world almost 140 years after it was opened for public. One of the oldest mountain rail routes, New Jalpaiguri Darjeeling Narrow Gorge Route, is the most popular of the many travelling options to Darjeeling because of its quaint course to tree plantations, long rocky stretches, hilly forests and deep moats. The small trains running on the narrow gorge tracks also offer an experience of the bygone era, making it the favourite among the tourists. And I was doing the research on the, on the train network in, in, in India and discovered that there was a train line up into the Himalayas so I thought wow like that's pretty amazing that they've built a train line into the Himalayas so it's something worth checking out for sure. अगर मैंने मतलब ट्रैवलिंग के लिए ये प्रेफर किया क्योंकि अब डार्जिलिंग जा रहे थे और भी दूसरे कन्वेंस हैं बट ये ज़्यादा मुझे प्रेफर किया क्योंकि ये अच्छा लगेगा देखने में सीन बगैरा. The famous toy train being run under the Darjeeling Himalayan Railways has been listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The train service was opened in 1879 and became operational in 1896 by the then British Lieutenant Governor Ashley Eden. The construction work on the world's highest railway bridge, Chenna Bridge, is going on at a fast pace in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir province. The iconic bridge, which is 359 meters above River Chenab, would be 35 meters taller than the iconic Eiffel Tower in Paris. The construction work on the world's highest railway bridge across the river Chenab is nearing completion in the Riyasi district of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir province. The iconic bridge, which is estimated to be constructed at a cost of nearly $166 million, has brought new hopes of development for the people living in the remote hilly town, besides providing new employment opportunities. A government official informed that the work on base supports of the bridge has already been completed and it would be ready for movement of vehicular traffic by March 2019. <laughs> जो जिनको बाहर जाना पड़ता था जैसे जम्मू दिल्ली कटरा वैष्णो देवी तो काफी 60-70% लोग जो हैं वो जहां पे ही अपने दहली लगाते हैं 5 600 रुपया दिन का इनको मिल जाता है तो रात को अपने बाल बच्चे के साथ या घर का भी काम काज चला सकते हैं इससे हमारा टूरिज्म वगैरह भी बढ़ जाएगा काफी और डेवलपमेंट के चांसेस बहुत ज्यादा बढ़ जाएंगे काफी एम्प्लॉयमेंट का भी स्कोप बढ़ जाएगा और ब्रिज के आने से हमारा ये देखो अप्रोच रोड जो है जो पहले नहीं थे वो अब वो भी काम शुरू हो गया यहां पे According to the government of India the engineering marvel would tower over 359 meters above the river Chenab making it about 35 meters higher than the Eiffel Tower The bridge will have a span of 1315 meters from either side including 650 meters along the viaduct. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. Cyclone Gaja ravages India's southern Tamil Nadu province. Activists protest against enforced disappearances in Balochistan. And Rohingya in Bangladesh protest efforts to send them back to Myanmar. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianNewsline. And follow us on Twitter at S Asia Newsline.
That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night.